decay. It happens to everything and everyone. We try to keep it out of our everyday lives, but what if, just this once, we let it in? What would we see if decay was allowed to run riot in our home? To find out, we built this, a home inside a box. In the kitchen and garden is all the food you might find if a family were about to have a party. Now, we're going to let it all rot. Over eight weeks, we're going to track every step of the extraordinary process that breaks down and recycles our everyday things. This house will help us understand why life itself depends on death and decay. At times, it's going to be repulsive. There's also a strange kind of fascination at work here. A lot of the things, if you look at them under the microscope, some of the fungi and bacteria are absolutely beautiful. And we'll be thinking outside the box to see what can be done to fight decay. Well, it's definitely the best two-year-old sandwich I've ever had. There are some molds that seem to have a mind of their own. It hasn't got a brain, it hasn't got a nervous system, but it still seems to be able to solve these sorts of complex problems. And we'll be sniffing out how the smell of decay is helping crack crime. So you could say this is a liquid trace of death. Something on this scale has never been attempted before, so things might not go according to plan. Ah, now that's where all the flies went. Whatever happens, it'll be a fascinating journey into the fate that awaits all living things. To be broken down, to be recycled, to be reborn. It's a surprising thought. Life relies on death. Living things, us included, can only be made from the remains of dead things. Individual atoms, the very building blocks of life, are constantly being reused, moving from death to life and back again. 